What a day. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. Wow. Thank you guys for showering my wife with love. I know she just got a boost. Amen. Of course, for our members, our visitors, the th uh, three gentlemen that were up here completed our faith home program. Um, we uh, uh, facilitate an 18-month discipleship training program here for men and women, amen, that have been bound by alcohol or drugs or any life-controlling situation. They come here and actually stay here for 18 months, amen, and we disciple them. It's Jesus, 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 and his word, his word, his word, his word, amen, 24-7, laying a foundation for success for the rest of their lives, amen. I'm a product of the faith home, a 19... 97 graduate of the ministry amen hallelujah amen without delay let's get into the word amen are y'all excited yeah. amen i told you I, I knew i was going to minister this word. i just didn't know when amen but i felt the release um from the lord to minister this word and the title of the message is where do you stand where do you stand Let's pray. Father, I thank you uh, this morning for the awesome opportunity to minister your word. And Father God, I pray right now that you will give me the words of wisdom, the words of knowledge, the words of understanding. Father God, that you will give me utterance to open my mouth boldly and speak as you would want me to speak. Father, I pray this morning that your people hear your voice in my voice. Father God, let the body of Christ here at the lighthouse be edified, built up, strengthened, refreshed, revived in the inner man like never before. Lord, I pray you would use this word to speak into people's lives, speak into their situations, speak into their circumstances. And Father, speak into their convictions this morning, Father God. Father God, if there's any error in us, Father God, bring correction this morning, Father, for we want to be on your side, Father God, in every situation, in every circumstance that life presents before us. Father, I thank you won't just be information, but an impartation of your spirit to bring the grace of God so we'll not only be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Father, I thank you for what you're going to do in advance in Jesus' mighty name. If you believe it, say amen. 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 For, for those that know, have known me over the years, you would um, probably look back over my ministry and the things I've ministered over the last few years coming up through the ministry under our Bishop Hank Furt. Um, I was known as somebody that would minister words on encouragement, and I still do that, amen, but... Over the last year, um, the Lord has um, shifted and uh, added a new component uh, to, my, to, my, to the words that I minister. And it's, it's not just, uh, per se, uh, exhortation and uh, faith and all that. But some of the words over the last, uh, since I think about March, have been words of, to bring correction, to bring things into proper alignment, to set the course of, the, the course of Jesus Christ, the church of Jesus Christ, on the right course so it's completely out of what I've been used to all the days of my life but it comes from a place of conviction and I began to realize and begin to think about that my years of serving here in the ministry serving with Bishop Hank Fur and things that we discussed things that he shared with me um, his revelation and his discernment things he was seeing uh, happen in our society and just hearing him and getting his insight I realized that over the years it was an impartation uh, that came into my life and I never knew that God would begin to use me in that capacity begin to minister now um, somebody uh, brother John Warren sent me a, 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 um, a bulletin that he that he wrote um, back in uh, 2016 and I read it and I was like oh my god it was so relevant for the times that we were in it could be a bulletin that could be written right now in 2020 and it would fit the script that's being played out so I believe that um, in the transition that the Lord didn't want the ministry to miss out on that um, discernment and those anointings and those graces. So I believe it was added to me. Amen. And now I'm, I'm ministering from that place. And, and that's what I'm going to be ministering on this morning. Where do you stand? Now, listen, for me this year, of course, we had the pandemic and a lot of stuff going on, but this for me has been the year, I call it the year of my wow. I've been wowed this year. I've been wowed by the church's reaction to the pandemic. And you know, I ministered on that early, earlier in the year, 
But now I, I got another wow that just been coming up over the last uh, couple of months. I'm in wow over po people's political views. I, I, I can't believe it. Now, now, I'm somebody that really believes the word. If God said it, that settles it. It doesn't matter what flesh and blood says it. It doesn't matter what the president says about it. It doesn't matter what any man says about it. Once it's laid out in the word of God for a disciple of Jesus Christ, the word of God is the final authority. I don't take the word of God to fit my life. My, 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 my life has to fit according to the word of God. So I'm, I can't adjust the word to fit my belief system. I got to adjust my belief system to f fit the word of God. Even if it's a belief system that I've been carrying around for many years and I'm confronted with the truth of the word of God as a disciple and as a son of God and as a Christian, I have a responsibility to make an adjustment according to the word of God. If it goes against my family, if it goes against tradition, if it goes against everything I believe, if if I really believe that Jesus is Lord over my life, I got to make the necessary adjustments and line up with the word of God. That's it. There's, there's no choice. Even though it hurts, it may hurt my feelings. It may cause me to be unpopular. It may reduce my circle of friends. It may reduce my family. It may reduce my likes on Facebook. It may reduce everything. But my, my number one goal in life is to do live my life, a life that is pleasing to the Lord Jesus Christ. So even though men may frown and men may attack me and men may ridicule me, it does not matter because once Jesus becomes the audience you're trying to satisfy, it doesn't matter what happens on planet Earth. So it's been a year of wow. Wow to the pandemic and now wow to what's happening in the politics. Now in 2 Timothy 4, 3, gentlemen, can you put that up? In the Amplified, it says, for the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine and accurate instruction that challenges them in God's truth. But wanting to have their ears tickled with something pleasing, they will accumulate from themselves many teachers, one after another, chosen to satisfy their own desires and to support the errors that they hold. I believe we're in that time right now where people are not willing to endure sound doctrine. They're not willing to take their mind, their will, and their emotions through the challenge, through the confrontation of Almighty God, through the, the sword of the spirit so God can, can divide spirit, soul asunder. They're not willing to endure when the word of God comes to confront their beliefs. They don't want to deal with it. I come to tell you that the word of God will come to offend your mind to reveal your heart. Your mind gets offended, but it's really sent at you to reveal your heart where you're really at. And listen, there's no condemnation because I'm still getting corrected by the Lord even after all these many years about things I believe in my life. As you look at the world and society, you can definitely see that we are living in the last of the last days. As you even look at our nation, you can see it's deeply divided and different issues have caused the divide. What's amazing is some of the issues that have caused the division in the nation and in the world have even crept into the church of Jesus Christ. And now it seems like the church is divided on some very issues, some very serious issues. Now an issue that the world is dealing with, all we got to do is go to the word of God and see what God says about it. Look at your neighbor and say, I don't want your opinion. Why did God send our, his word? I believe one of the reasons he sent his word is to deliver us from our opinions. Because he knew that there's a million, over a million opinions in the world. Everybody's got 
a different opinion. So there's got to always be a basis of truth that we can filter opinions to, or you'll have each man going his own way and no uh, truth to guide and navigate and bring correction into people's lives. So truth is brought to correct error in our lives. And you got to be somebody that's hungry for the truth of God, even if it means letting go of an error that you've held on dear all your life. So where does this leave the church of Jesus Christ? And what side should we be standing on during these last of the last days? Well, it's very simple. We should be standing on God's side. And where does God stand? He stands on the principles laid out in his word. Now, some of y'all probably been following me on social media. And I posted a couple of videos just recently challenging some error. But listen, everything I put out is based on the word. It's not based on my opinion. Matter of fact, I actually give scriptures and you know, people are still challenging the truth of the word of God. Let me say this in the world's going to do what the world is going to do. But Christians are challenging the truth of the word of God. I'm like, what, what's wrong? The, it, I'm, 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 saying, I'm saying this is what the word says. I'm coming from the way and they still say, oh, we got a problem with that. We'll get to that a little bit more. And see why that is. So we should be on God's side. We are kingdom citizens. And our highest priority in everything. Is that we be on the side of God. The side of the king of the kingdom. Which is Jesus Christ. Now let me say this. Ultimately we put our faith in God. We don't put our faith in a man. Or a politician. Or a governor leader. It even even if, if, if the if, even if elections go the wrong way, we still got a Lord and Savior and Redeemer that can never be moved, that can never be voted out, that never has a term that expires. He has an eternal position and the end for his government. There is no end. So we rest in that. But some people have taken that as an excuse to say nothing and do nothing. Do you think God just has us here just to come to church and leave out and not take our influence that he's given us to affect the world outside of the church? I ain't worried about them people in the world. I'm just going to church, minding my own business. And you say that because it has not affected your personal life yet. Somebody say the church in China. <laughs> a church that has been affected, affected, that had to go underground because the government over that nation is hostile towards Christianity. While we're here, we're supposed to use our godly influence whenever possible to move society toward the Lord and his principles. The Bible says faith without works is dead. If the Lord didn't want us to affect society, he would take us home right now. In Matthew 5, 14 and 16, gentlemen, in the Amplified, uh, Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all those that are in the house. Let your light show shine before men in such a way that they may see your good deeds and moral excellence and recognize honor and integrity and glorify your father, which is in heaven. So we're not called to be hidden away. We're not called to be silent. We're called to be a light of the world. That's why it was insane for anybody even to bring up about closing the churches. What are you saying? You're trying to shut the light out that God told us to be? We can't do that. So we're called to be an influence to this world that we will be a light shining in the midst of darkness. I'm amazed at how many people say they love the Lord and they are Christians, but they have failed the loyalty test. 
If you are a Christian, your first loyalty should be to the Lord Jesus Christ. Loyalty means faithful to one's sovereign government or state, faithful to one's oath, commitments, or obligations. So our faithfulness, our loyalty is to the Lord Jesus Christ himself. So every act that I do, every word that I say, every attitude that I have, I'm supposed to uh, filter it through my loyalty before Almighty God. I can't have a Christian life in here and then go outside of here and have a separate life. You wouldn't even come here and listen to me no more if you knew I was slipping and dipping when I walked outside the church doors. You, you're expecting me as a leader, as a, somebody that professes the name name of Jesus to see what you see in here that you should see it out there you shouldn't drive by a bar and see my car listen a uh, 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 park in the parking lot that would be a contradiction to my loyalty and to my position as a leader and as a Christian of Jesus Christ second Timothy 2 19 says this Just prep it, fellas. The Bible says, nevertheless, the firm foundation of God, which he has laid, stands sure and unshaken despite attacks. Bearing this seal, the Lord knows those who are his, and let everyone who names the name of the Lord stand apart from wickedness and withdraw from wrongdoing. Notice, it said that we have a, we stand, where do you stand? I stand on the firm foundation of God Almighty, a sure foundation. And despite attacks, I have the seal of God. You have the seal of God knowing that because you, you stand on the side of the Lord, God has sealed you and marked you. And even though the attacks may come, your foundation won't be broken. We are standing on the firm foundation of the truth of the word of the living God and we cannot be moving we got to depart from all wickedness gentlemen pull up Psalms 11 3 in the amplified listen to this if the foundations of a godly society are destroyed what can the righteous do I don't want nothing to do with no politics. I don't want nothing to do with, with, with these decisions that these people are making. But the Bible says if the foundations of a godly society are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Saying that a, a society that moves away from righteousness can affect the righteous believers of Jesus Christ. Now, let me say this. This is why it's different with this nation than other nations. The United States of America was started by people. Now, listen, I'm not saying none of these people were perfect. So don't pull up a litany of they did this. They did that. He, he who is without sin. Throw your stone. You, your, if your resume is clear, you ain't never done nothing, you, was, you, were, you descended from heaven, you ain't never done nothing, then, then, then go for it. But we all done uh, messed up stuff, even while we were Christians. That's not the point. <laughs> the point is that they left a, a, a country trying to flee an oppressive government and wanted to come to a country to practice freedom of religion freedom to worship god almighty that was the foundation that this country was started on and because of that foundation the result was massive prosperity blessing favor and protection and the united states of america has become one of the greatest nations in the world now, it wasn't the government. The government came after the faith of the believers that put their foot on the ground and they had a dedication ceremony and dedicated the land to the Lord God Almighty. Now, what's happened under the guise of love and acceptance 
We have allowed things to come in to begin to chip away at the foundation. Now, this is chipping away has been going on for many, many years. But somebody say this must be a strong foundation. I think it's also being wrapped around by the mercy of God. I gave y'all all all this, then y'all going to deny me? Y'all going to take prayer out of school? You're going to do this? You're going to get get mad when somebody says the name of Jesus? When the prosperity that you're reaping benefits from uh, came from the kingdom of Almighty God, then you're going to turn and blaspheme the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? So this is why it's different from this country than other countries because of how it all started. Now, if you do your search on history and you can look at a parallel of Israel and how Israel started and what was the outcome of Israel when they began to not follow God. The Bible says that they were brought into captivity and another nation came over to oppress them and take power. Of course, God blessed them in captivity. But how many people know I'd rather be blessed in freedom than in captivity any day? I'm in jail, but I'm being blessed. Well, I want to get out of jail. I don't want to be. I'm mean, That's nice, but open it up. Let me out. All my meals are taken for them. Guys bringing me canteen. That's nice, but I'd rather have a refrigerator. Lord blessing me. So Christians in the nation, God is depending on us to align ourselves with him. I believe if the Christian would rise up and align themselves with God, God would uh, have even greater mercy and a window of of grace will be extended to the nation. But when you have Christians that are siding with the evil side and calling what is good evil, Houston, we got a problem. We got sin in the camp. So that's why this is a little different uh, for for United States. If you're from another country, maybe it's not so relevant. But for this country, we can't let it keep drifting away from the way of God. Now, let me say this. There's some stuff in the Bible that cannot be prayed away. It's going to happen. It's on. It's in Revelations on a prophetic timetable. But that don't give us an excuse just to sit back, uh, let the wheel go and let the thing smash into the wall. That's up to God's time. I don't know. The people 20 years ago thought we were living in the last days. We are living in the last days, but I, no man really knows how much time is left. So we got to continue to exercise our faith and resist the devil, and he will flee from us. So we can't just give in to the devil. We got to continue to resist the evil that is in the land and speak against it when it rises its head up. If the foundations of a godly society are destroyed, what can the righteous do? That's in my Bible. That's in your Bible. So let's look at some places where God is standing. Because we want to stand on God's side. This message actually came out of a conversation I was having with somebody that I love very deeply. I've known for many years and we were just talking and somehow the thing went a little political and I wasn't even trying to go down. I'm not going because that just sparked strife and I don't want that to destroy uh, my relationship. So anyway, some some things were said and I heard it and I didn't address it right there because we were just and I remember getting in the car and driving away and I said, man, Lord, I feel so grieved right now. What is it? And the Lord began to give me the stuff that I've been, I'm sharing right now. And the Lord gave me the opportunity to go back. And I said, God, I can't leave that undone. The Bible says faithful are the wounds of a friend. So even if it hurts, I got to say the truth. I can't leave that, that, that open wound. I can't leave that in error. I got to say something to correct that. And God opened the door for me to bring the truth of the word of God. And he said, I see it. Thank you for being bold enough to share it. 
Look at your neighbor and say, open your mouth. Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, I, uh, the Lord says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your seed may live. So these scriptures make it clear that the Lord does not stand on the side of death. He stands on the side of life. And the result of those that stand with him is a blessing. And those that stand on the side of death, the result of it is a curse coming into their lives. And both decisions will affect the next generation. The Bible says that you choose life. The God, God actually tells you, even though it's laid before you, life and death, choose life that you can be blessed and that your next generation can be blessed. Why am I being so passionate about this stand? Because it's not just about me. I'm concerned about the next generation. When I'm when when I'm when the Lord takes me home, there's still gonna be people living here, and I want them to be able to go to my notes, my my YouTube videos, and pull up what was my daddy, what was Pastor Tony talking about. We gotta leave some type of basis of truth for the next generation because the devil is trying to take the truth of the word of God, the truth of history, right out of the fabric of our society. Because with history, we're able to look back and learn what works and what doesn't work. I can look back at some family members in my life that did not live for God and seen the outcome of their life and make a decision. I can't have an outcome like that. I can't live like that. I don't want that to be my end. And I don't want to pass that down to my children and my children's children. A legacy is not just about dollars. A legacy is about moral values because you can have dollars, but if you don't have a moral foundation, the dollars will just slip away. Talk to the prodigal son about he had many dollars, but his moral foundation was not even there, and it caused him to lose the prosperity that the moral foundation of the father had gave to him. If he had just continued to walk on the truth of the foundation of his father, his prosperity would have increased instead of decreasing. So the Lord does not stand on the side of death. He stands on the side of life. Jesus said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes on him would not perish but have everlasting life. God is into saving people. Let's see where else the Lord stands. Psalms 1.1 says, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. So according to this scripture, even though God loves the sinner, he does not stand with them in their sin. So the church should never stand with anything or anyone that is promoting sin. Gentlemen, pull up 2 Corinthians 6, 6 and 17. God's a unifier. Yeah, sometimes, but look at this. <laughs> and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. So God is saying there can be, even though we love the world, even though we reach out to them and we have ministry to them, we don't have any agreement with the sin life. And the God says, come out from among them. God is saying, pick a side. I'm not over there. I'm over here. I'm not in sin. I'm in righteousness. Don't you know who you are? You are the temple of the holy God, of God. What does that mean? God's spirit dwells on the inside.
inside of you. A lot of things that are dividing us, if we would just set ourselves back in agreement with God, we will all be on the right side. You know, we just came through a season of exposure where a lot of the church was exposed. And really, ladies and gentlemen, there is no problem with exposure. But after exposure, we need to confront what was exposed. Confronting those things that are exposed and those things that are displeasing to almighty God. That's why I said it's not so bad that what, whatever hit and whatever, even if it was a bad reaction, ain't nothing wrong with that. That's happened to all of us. But the next thing, once it's exposed, we got to confront what's been exposed. For me to say, I didn't do nothing wrong. I reacted the right way. I reacted according to the will of God, even though I was doing stuff that was going against the word of God. That means I'm not ready to confront what was exposed. And then the, uh, the uh, opportunity for it to happen again will happen because you never corrected it from the last time. So we just came through a season of exposure, exposing uh, 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 Christians and church. Of course, the world, we already knew what time it was there, but, but we got to confront those things that have been exposed. Do you want to be blessed or do you want to play church? Do you want to play church or do you want to be the church? I refuse not to tell the truth. I fear God. I've refused to, to, to uh, go and, and, and get people to uh, check my message out and make sure it's not offensive. Would this offend somebody? Who could this affect? Who's dealing with that issue that maybe I shouldn't say that? Oh, y'all don't think that goes on. Heaping up for themselves teachers because they have tickling ears and they cannot endure sound doctrine. So they say, give me a teacher that's going to uh, uh, sugarcoat it and uh, consider my feelings and hold back the truth. First Peter 4, 17, the Bible says, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. What? God judgment at the house of God. And if it first began at us, what shall the end be of them that not obey the gospel of God? The pandemic, it exposed the church, a judge judgment. Now we got to make the adjustments. Because if not, what's going to happen to the sinner? What's going to happen to the world if the church stays in the same era as the world? What's the difference? Church, y'all just like the world. Y'all promote death. Y'all clubbing and doing everything that we're doing. You're bound by celebrities just like us. It ain't what Jesus said. It's what the celebrity says. It's what the sports guy says. You think I'm going to take what a sport dude said over what the word of God says? And now one of them sports guys ever gave you a dollar. And you bow down at the feet of them dudes and not bow down at the feet and worship Jesus that saved and redeemed your life from destruction, restored you, blessed you, got you out of messes, and now you're going to deny him when he needs you the most and celebrate at the feet of some athlete that you don't even know. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. I know this wasn't going to be a hallelujah message, but thank you, Jesus. Amen. It's, it's surgery time. It's God speaking to you time. It's God making adjustments in your belief system time. Uh, dealing with your soul and mindsets and things you've heard to create ideologies that exalt themselves against the knowledge of almighty God.
Now listen, there have been major issues in our society. And for the most part, the church has been silent. And there are a lot of reasons for the silence. The biggest one, I believe, is fear. Fear of the backlash. Fear of being uh, ridiculed. Fear of trying to protect your name and your brand and don't want that to come under fire. Fear of hurting your reputation. But my Bible tells me that when Jesus showed up on the scene, he made himself of no reputation. He said, I know you guys are up and down. One day you'll be saying Hosanna in the highest and the same group of y'all will be saying crucify him the next day. So I'm not going to begin to worry about my, uh, my, how I look in your eyes. I'm just going to come and complete my mission and do what's right before my father what's in, that is in heaven. He made himself of no reputation. I had a reputation, guys. Pastor Tony, encourager, nice guy, happy guy, da 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 da. I don't want to come to that church. I go let God talk about his political stuff. That's not all I talk about. I address, but that's not all. Go look at the, the messages. But I had to be willing to lose th that identity and be directed and be bold to preach what God's been giving me. And lose that reputation to have the reputation from heaven. Hallelujah. They may be disliking it, but Jesus is liking it. I like that. Mm, that's my, be bold, my son. I like that. I think there's more for us than there are against us. The biggest one is fear. The other one is political correctness. We got to be politically correct with what we preach. We don't want to offend anyone. So we got to be politically correct and take the message through the political correctness machine. Take that out, take that out, take that out, take that out. The next one. People are being silent because of human reasoning, not fully believing in the undiluted truth of the word of God. Somebody say human reasoning. It's amazing the people that attack you who, whose lives are out of order and they're trying to attack you and your life is in order. You don't go to church. You don't submit to a pastor. You got your own philosophy. I go here. I do what I want to do. Nobody can't tell me what I want to do. And that's why you're in error. I'm like, wait a minute. Who's saying this? Let me check them out. Oh, my God. You not waste your time. Church, this is not the season of the lamb. This is the season of the lion of the tribe of Judah. If you don't understand that dichotomy about the Lord Jesus Christ, you will miss it. You will, you will judge something inaccurately because it does not look like a lamb. It does not sound like a lamb. And because it's coming loud and powerful and confrontational, we're coming as the lion of the tribe of Judah. This is not the time of the lamb. This is the time of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Lions roar. Lions don't back down. The Bible says that the righteous are as bold as a lion. A lion is not afraid of any other adversity. Don't care what the elephant thinks. Don't care what the rhino thinks. When he roars, he roars. The lion. Jesus is saying, I'm the lion now. This is the season for the lion. It's not the time to be silent, church. Gentlemen, pull up Matthew 10, 34 through 38. Listen to this. This is in your Bible. This is in my Bible. Well, what about the little lamb? Listen to this. Do you not think that I've come to bring peace on the earth? I've not come to bring peace, but a sword of division between belief and unbelief. 
I've come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemy will be the members of his own household when one believes and another does not. And he who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take up his cross, expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come and follow me, believing in me, conforming to my example in living, and if need be suffering or perhaps dying because of your faith in me is not worthy of me. I know there's many people in this church that had to make a decision. Am I going to side with my family or am I going to side with God? Am I going to side with my, my, my kids or am I going to side with Jesus? Am I going to side with my daughter or am I going to side with Jesus? He said, I come to bring a sword. When you stand on my side, sometimes it's not going to produce unity. It's going to actually produce division. It's not going to make sense. They're going to say, why do you believe like that? Why do you talk like that? Why are you against that? Why are you standing for that? I'm standing on the side of God Almighty. What are you talking about? This is not from me. This is the Lord God Almighty. And I'm coming from the conviction of the word of the living God. Jesus is basically saying, I am drawing a line in the sand. I am creating a standard that will offend many and cause division and not unity. And the Lord said, I am requiring you, church, to choose a side. And it could call, possibly cost you relationships to stand with me. Are you willing to stand on the side of God? Not the side of man, not the side of culture, not the side of social, social uh, issues, but stand on the side of the kingdom of almighty God because this earthly kingdom that people are standing on is falling and passing away. It's like a sinking ship. Get off that ship and get on the side of almighty God. It's like the days of Noah. You got to get on the ark because a flood is coming and you don't want to be on the outside of the ark. You want to be on the side of God Almighty so you won't be destroyed. I got to get in the ark. I'm not going to ridicule Pastor Tony. I'm getting with the program because when the God's hand comes down, I want to be on the right side. Jesus saying enough is enough. I'm tired of this church games. I'm tired of sin creeping in the church. I'm tired of the church being wishy-washy. I'm drawing a line in the sand. If God, when the prophet Elijah came to Israel, he told them, listen, how long will you hold between two opinions? If God be God, then follow him. But if Baal be God, then follow him. But you got to make a decision. I'm finding out a lot of people don't like these kind of scriptures. Ooh. And it's not me. It's him. He wrote that. Go look it up in your Bible. Wait, that's some, some type of T Pastor Tony version. Let me check it out in my Bible. Go check it out. It's going to say the same thing. Check me out. I encourage you to check me out. I'm finding out that a lot of people don't like these kind of scriptures because their Jesus is based off their own ideology. They have a Jesus that makes them feel comfortable, not uncomfortable. They don't conform their lives to the word of God. They conform the word to their life and their personal preferences and prejudices. The Jesus of the Bible, yes, he loves us, but the Lord that I know, that I serve, that I hear his voice, he will confront you. The Bible says, whom the Lord loves, he will correct. 
He is a speaking God. He is a revelator. He is a revelation God. He is the rhema word of God. He will speak into your spirit and correct you and tell you, no son, no daughter, that's not of me. That's not of me. Get on my side. You're on the wrong side. He will confront us. Church, we are not called to be silent. We are called to speak during this season. I found this amazing scripture. Gentlemen, pull it up. Proverbs 31, 8 and 9. Listen to this. He says, but you are to be a king who speaks up on behalf of the disenfranchised and pleads for the legal rights of the defenseless and those who are dying. Be a righteous king, judging on behalf of the poor and interceding for those most in need. But the Bible said that Jesus is the king of kings and the Lord of Lord. Who are the kings? You and me are the kings. But it said that you are supposed to be a king that speaks up on behalf of the afflicted. It's none of my business. Put my finger up and go in my house. I don't want nothing to do with that. No, 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 no. No, you're supposed to speak up. Don't be sitting there, your family members calling you, promoting all this evil. You're just sitting there and you got the truth. The word of God is convicting you and you don't want to offend them. You got to be like, um, excuse me, can, 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 I, can I say something? Yeah, yeah, what you got? You're wrong. I'm going to flat out tell you right now, in the name of Jesus, you're wrong. Why? Amen. You got a Bible? Go pick it up. Amen. Let's go to this. It's like the, my friend, it grieved me. I said, I got to go back. I can't leave that undone. I got to go confront this. I got to. I got to. I got to. How will anyone ever know where we stand if we are silent? It's time for us to speak up. There are many groups right now speaking up, and even though their cause is wrong, because they are so bold, multitudes are joining them. Sometimes the message won't be popular. You won't get a lot of likes, but that's okay. Keep on speaking. Look at what Jesus told the Apostle Paul in Acts 18. It says, one night the Lord said to Paul in a vision, do not be afraid anymore, but go on speaking and do not be silent. For I am with you and no one will attack you in order to hurt you because I have many people in this city. Sometimes an apostle or a disciple or a prophet of God doesn't have a popular message and he gets no, no likes, no hallelujah. Instead, you get stones thrown at you, people ridiculing you, mocking you, even making lies about you. But Jesus had to come and encourage the apostle Paul. Paul, this is the only way this gospel is going to get out. How can they hear unless there be a preacher? How can they, how can they have faith unless somebody proclaim the word of God? Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of the living God how are they going to have faith to stand if you buckle and silence the faith and the conviction that I've given you how are you what are you going to impart silence or are you going to con 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 uh, convey the conviction of the Holy Ghost I can't be silent I got to talk about it. I tried being silent Y'all see me, I went a little quiet. I went a little under the radar. But the more I keep hearing around society, I said, God, we need a contradiction. We need the truth of the word of God to begin to emerge up through this mess. We need a, 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 a wheat coming up in the midst of the, of the, of the weeds. Amen. And we got to speak truth, even if it's rejected, even if it's not accepted, even though we planted a seed. Sometimes the church is not speaking because we have the same standard as the world. Now let me bring it in for a landing. Church, it's time to get back on the side of God. 
especially on the issues that are plaguing our society. Now listen, I'm about to lay some stuff out. This ain't political, this is kingdom. I'm not gonna say nobody's name. I'm just gonna give you kingdom. There's an election coming up and how we vote says what side we're standing on. Some say and think that Christians shouldn't be involved in politics and definitely don't be talking about that stuff in church. Give me a feel good message. I don't want to hear that. But Proverbs 29 two says this, when the righteous are in authority and become great, the people rejoice. But when the wicked man rules, the people groan inside. Then Proverbs 14, 34, the Bible says righteousness, moral and spiritual integrity and virtuous character exalts a nation. But sin is a disgrace to any people. Our position is not with any political party or any political candidate. Ain't got nothing to do with neither one of them. I don't even know either one of them. It's nothing personal, and that's why we don't fall into the personality trap. Our position is strictly focused on the kingdom of Almighty God. Now, when it comes to what we're going to do, we don't want to hear what you have to say. We want to see the agenda and the policies that you are promoting. How close, who's the closest to the word of the living God? The Lord told me this. A politician will not be judged on his personality. He will be judged on the policies that he stands for. Did they honor me or did they dishonor me? And he'll be judged on that. That's it. Again, I'll say it again. We don't put our faith in man or politics because ultimately Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. But while we're here on planet Earth, we're to use our influence to affect things, to change things, to resist demonic influences that have the ability to influence society through politics. That's what it is, people. The devil is in the politics. So for the Christian not to be getting in there, it's just giving the devil free reign to set up shop and do what he wants to do. Let's pass laws now to shut all the churches down. Let's pass laws now to limit church services. Let's pass laws now to tell people they can't worship. Let's pass. That's what's going on right now. I don't believe it's that those governors, I believe it's a demonic entity that they're yielding to. For the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. So it's not them. That's why we pray for them. I, we love them. I love them. I, I lo listen, no matter where they stand, we love them. I, I hit. Part of my prayer is not just praying for current leadership. I'm praying for opposing parties. And if, when they get in, I'm still praying for them. If they get in. Because that's what we're called to. We vote and support ones whose policies are close to the kingdom. Now let me give you the three the Lord gave me. The first one is the order of God. Of humanity which is relationship between a man and a woman. Order of God set up in the book of Genesis. So any agenda, any politician that's promoting anything that goes against the divine order of humanity, the divine order of God, we can't vote for. Look at your name and say, do you want to be on God's side? really like that guy but he does promote that Ugh. next one nation of Israel and this is why Genesis 12 3 God said I will bless and do good and benefit those who bless you and I will curse that is subject to my wrath and judgment the one who curses despise and dishonor and has contempt for you and in you shall all families of the earth shall be blessed. So those nations or people that bless Israel will be blessed. Those nations that come against Israel shall be cursed. So we got to make sure that 
whoever we vote for are not aligning themselves up with the enemies of Israel. Because we want to be on God's side, which is the blessing side, not the curse side. Now listen, I honestly believe this. If you do the right thing before God and the whole thing went another way, I believe that God is going to favor you. Because he said, you know what? It ain't your fault. So I'm not going to let you pay the price. The Bible says that it can rain on, on, on the just and the unjust. At the sea. You know, this is Florida. It can rain right here. I was talking to a lady last night. She's only like five miles away. She said, oh, my God, it's raining here. I looked out the window. I said, it ain't here. So God said, I could be blessed. They can be getting all hell and you can be blessed. It ain't raining here. It ain't raining in my house. I stood on the side of God. I stood on the side of life. The sun is still shining. Now the next one and the last one should have been the first one and is the first one I believe before almighty God. Abortion. You guys have seen my post. And this is my post is not about the two I just laid out. My posts are about the abortion issue. And do you know that people still in their diluted, confused, angry, hatred, hate, hatred mind still have a problem with that? Even though I'm speaking for the unborn. You're welcome. The abortion. Now, I had a chance last week to, I got invited to a, a meeting in Lakeland of a uh, pastor in California, listen to this, that has a mega church that has been in a, a legal battle with the state because the state wanted them to close down and can't worship God. He's in a legal battle and filing some stuff against the governor of that state. And he went through that and told us about that. He talked about the racism thing, how we're supposed to handle that. He talked about uh, the riots, how we're supposed to handle that. But he said, uh, gentlemen, it was a group of pastors, gentlemen, the, the real reason I'm here, and I believe it's the highest thing on God's agenda, the abortion issue. I'm like, wait a minute, this guy's fighting battles over there, and he's traveling all around the country now to talk about this issue. That's when you know you call to, to that's why you, that's when you know you're no joke in the spirit that you can be in a battle but outside encouraging other people. <laughs> so, gentlemen, Proverbs 6 17. Somebody say it's from the word, it's not Pastor Tony, it's what the word says. This is it, this is where I'm coming from. Proverbs 6, 6, 6, 16 and 17 says, These six things does the Lord hate. Seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and this one, hands that shed innocent blood. Now listen. The reason why this issue is above the others because if you notice, the other issues were not listed on the seven things that the Lord hates. But this one was slipped into there that the shedding of innocent blood is something that God hates and is an abomination to him. This one should really be the game changer for every believer. Believe it or not, there's still Christians over there that still will sweep this one under the rug. Thank you, Brother Elliot. He sent me a website, and I was able to look up some statistics. Since 1973, over 61 million children have been aborted. What's an, an even amazing number, that the percentage that was from people that were involved in a rape was only like 1%. That's the argument. Per day, 2,362. Per hour, 98. One every 96 seconds. So, it doesn't get a lot of attention because it's hidden. But guess what? It's not hidden from God. All the 63 million babies, the Lord was there looking at it. 
and seeing death being inflicted on a life that he ordained to come into life. A soul, a spirit. Let me ask you this. You ever seen a case where somebody killed a woman and the woman was pregnant? What's the charge? Murder? Double murder. So why are we, uh, because the way it's done, that changes it? The law says that's a life you're going to pay the price. So why is it any different just because somebody makes a choice? I don't want this. It's going to be a financial burden for me. Then adopt, give them away for adoption. But don't continue to add to these numbers and don't continue to support politicians that add to the 63 million aborted babies. Ladies and gentlemen, this is huge before almighty God. And it's now, I believe, is the time to be, to be addressed what's going on in our Supreme Court. Because that's where it was instituted at. That's where it's happened. And now that thing is, that institution is being shaken. So don't look at CNN. Don't look at Fox News. Go back into the word. Pull back. Get God's perspective. How does God feel about this? And ladies and gentlemen, vote kingdom. Let me say it again. Vote kingdom. Stay on God's side. It may, and listen, it's none of my business. It's nobody's business who you vote for. So you don't have to tell nobody. But when you get in that booth, vote kingdom. Conscious before almighty God. Supporting life and not death. Amen. Stand to your feet. Glory to Jesus. The scripture that we opened up with, Deuteronomy 30, 19, and I'll leave you with this. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your seed may live. Amen? Amen. Amen. Who's, who's next? We got the faith home? Are we doing something? Come on up, guys. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're going to have prayer at the end of the service. Amen. Listen, guys, I, I love you. I love you too much to get up here and not tell you the truth. Love you too much to get up here and be politically correct. And I fear God too much to, 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 to be anybody else. Amen. Amen.